Let's start off hot. Um, so Punk was on Ariel Hawani today. Right. He did not hold back at all. Good. Okay. Um, and it was very interesting because Joe, did you like? Did you listen to the whole interview, Joe? I'm on my way through. I uh, see. I recording. the whole seven minute clip about the Jack Perry thing. I, I did listen to that. Other, yeah. yeah. I listened to the other clips on Ariel's side. There's some interesting clips going. We're going to play a few couple of them here. I'd like you to comment on these. Uh, they're not very long at all. Right. Okay. But the, you know, I, I want to make this very clear. Okay. <laughs> that it's it's fascinating that when we, you know our fans. Well, you know how we talk about the, the climate of professional wrestling, Tony, and like, and in, in politics and in the internet on X, formerly known as Twitter and social media, everybody's always talking about misinformation, right? It really is incredible how things that we're like way, way, way ahead of the, of the curve on, like, like, like months, sometimes years ahead of the curve. Everybody calls us irrelevant grifters. You know, thing like you don't old hats, bitter stuff. So I and literally, like sometimes it takes years, other times it just takes months. Oftentimes it takes weeks. But the dirt sheets and the Mark podcasters are repeating things that we said for, like a long time ago, and we're saying and it had been saying, and everybody's just, just hating on us, right? And basically, everybody just kind of comes around because we're not lying. We're like telling, we're like giving like constructive criticism on critical things that they like uh, th these companies do right, and do wrong. And we're usually spot on in the, in the errors that they make and then the corrections that they make are, are kind of like, like this. Sometimes they correct things. It's like, you know, th that's what we were saying they should do, you know? And you know, I don't know if like they, they listen to us or anything, but like a lot of the, you know, the veterans that podcast, the people with experience, you know, me, you, um, you know, Eric, Vince, Cornette, and Suffield, they're all, all of us Look. have been echoing the same criticisms and, you know, the, the same things that we see wrong with the wrestling landscape. And it come way, way, way later, everybody, everybody comes, comes, you know, comes along and joins the party because for some reason it's so toxic that when we say things that the Dirt Sheet community and the Mark Podcaster community and their fans, they immediately just have to disagree with us because we said it, you know, and like, then we were just trying to sit and say, Hey, look guys, we're, we're not, you know, giving you misinformation. Like the reality is like, if you guys are just listening to the, the, the dirt sheet guys and the Mark podcast or guys that don't really know people, this business have never done it before. You're the ones that are getting the misinformation. So I want you, so one of these clips is punk is, um, uh, let's play some of these punk clips and talk, and talk about it. Cause like he, one of these, he echoes exactly what we've been saying for a very long time. And it's, yeah. you know, you're going to have people that are going to think he's hating and lying. It's like, no, it's like Punk worked there in AW. Yeah. He was in a locker room. You know, Conan tries to be as politically correct as possible, talk about things and stuff, but he's been in that locker room. You know, we know what's going on there, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so play some of these clips. Very interesting. I mean, you go, Punk did. This was excellent content by Bang Arrow. He posted like, like he posted like like ten of these clips because they're all very yeah. good. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Finished. Very first one, but I mean, it's the the truth is the truth. Like he he he's not a boss. He's he he's a nice guy. You know. He have only been saying that forever. Is a detriment to the the company, but it's not my company. Mm. You yeah. know, I just I'm an I'm, a, I'm an outsider. I thought I was brought in to you know sell merchandise and tickets and draw you know numbers for pay-per-view but okay. all right i mean how long you been saying that tony's a nice guy forever and, and he is, he is I, nice. nobody, nobody I, didn't really argue whether tony Khan is a nice guy That's yeah but the thing is argue, is that right? you, if you're going to be a boss you have to act like one and be one right you know right um enough said play, play some of these more than some of these short short play this one Their business, and I know a lot of people are gonna be upset. It's just not predicated. It's not a real business. It's not about. What do you mean by that? It's not about selling tickets. It's not about drawing money. It's not about making money. It's just not. What's it about? I don't know. 
really i i think well he can continues there and says maybe having good matches yeah, yeah, it, yeah. he says that yeah and it's like bro well, that's, that's not like, a what, business plan you know well no but that's but the funny thing is that's literally almost verbatim but the funny thing is like when punk went to AEW, he was like calling out all the old hat podcasters like guys like us and eric and stuff like eric literally said that your know, AEW is not a business it's a well-funded hobby and like here's punk punk went there <laughs> and come back. he's like literally echoing exactly what eric said about the business you know um no skip skip the jack perry stuff skip the jack you want the vince stuff uh yeah there's a there's a couple of these clips all most of these clips are all good vince is um, this vince part one's four minutes 30 and then this one is 230 yeah yeah let's do this one the 230 um everything was stated here yeah. You know, oh, we'll, we'll give you a tour of the new towers. You know, you come to the, the gym. Oh, great. It's always a badass gym. Um, everything was state of the art. And I was in there. Uh, I was in there and I'm, I was on the phone on a treadmill warming up. And Vince's trainers, like, hey, he's like, you got to get off the phone. Vince doesn't like it when people are on the phone in, your, in the gym. <laughs> and I, I was on the phone there. <laughs> and I was just kind of yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. You know. And then, uh, then I saw him walking down into the gym. He came in for his, his daily workout. Yeah. And what was that like? I, he gave me a big hug. He said, "Welcome home. Good to good to see you. Let's let's connect after after I work out." And I was like, "All right." Haven't seen him since. You didn't connect. No, no, no. I think some stuff came up, Ariel. Oh, well, I, I, I thought maybe <laughs> literally like an hour later. I didn't know if he was like, "Come up to the office and let's have a uh, tete no, a tete." No, I had to go. Okay. I had to like work out and get is that the only back. conversation that you had with him yeah. since returning? Wow. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about what's transpired since? Uh, I mean, how do you feel? I mean, there's no positivity there. You know, there's very much. Uh, I re I I didn't read all the allegations. I read text messages, mm. and I went, oh, like what? It's indefensible, you know. And I think. You know, doing this, I, 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 I'd imagined I was going to be asked about it, you know, and I think the easiest thing for people to do is to kind of ignore it or avoid it. Um, but man, it's, it's there. It, it, and m my initial first thing out of my mouth was, I'm kind of shocked at how dumb he was, like writing stuff down and leaving that paper trail. And it's horrific. And I'm not, you like... I think at this point, all the energy should be used to somehow, I don't even know if you can make reparations or amends, but there's victims here, you know? So like what CM Punk thinks about Vince and the CM Punk Vince relationship doesn't mean anything. All that stuff takes a back seat. I'm more concerned about like going forward. How do those people survive after suffering all that trauma my biggest concern all right um i want to uh it just is i okay i'm trying to put, put my words together here so there's a story coming out came, came out today right now you know we never i you know all the other podcasters you know, went on went on youtube and got massive amount of views and you know there was a lot of um traffic over the, over the when, when the visit man allegations came out and generated tremendous discussion right and you know we probably could have done that too right but i i said to myself you know like you know, what, what do you want me to say you know the the, the you know we we could probably get some make some good money on youtube and get you know, with, with the views and everything but but what what would I be saying? Like I don't know what what happened here. I don't know the facts. I don't know anything that's going on. I just I've read an allegation, and I haven't heard anything from the other side on whether or not this stuff's true. And like so, I'm not going to comment until I start hearing things come out, right? Like I, I want to hear the other side. I want to hear something, you know, like like these these we have a, a bunch of text messages. They're not in context. They're individual text messages, probably from a girl he was dating 
on probably thousands of text messages that we saw like four or five, right? And that we're supposed to like, you know, make our decision and everything. It looks like Punk is like one of those type of guys that like likes to join the herd and stuff and everything and comment on stuff before he's got all the facts. Okay, Punk's gonna be fine. Punk's gonna be a believe all women guy. Believe all time. women guy, yeah. right? So he's yeah. gonna have this thing like he believe, but, but I'm not. We don't approach it that way. So finally, we finally have something that has come from the McMahon camp. Okay, do you have the article, Joe? Yeah. Why don't you Why don't you read it? Because you sent it to me. Okay, and I want to I want to get your thoughts on this because just right off the bat, it like says, okay, yeah, maybe I should have waited a little bit before we started. You know, condemning Vince McMahon and chopping his head off and convicting him and you know dragging him through the no, but I re- I, I, go ahead, go ahead. I remember when we covered Vince McMahon, and both you and I both said, if this did happen, it's right. let's wait till we get all the facts. Get, I remember yeah. specifically you and I both saying that. Right, hundred percent to to the point. People in our comment section on YouTube were were mad at us and people on Twitter. Were angry at us for not commenting on this more, like like they said you you did not do do enough on this stuff. It's like, dude, I'm not gonna just my way through and make up things to say when I have no clue what's going on here, right? But well, finally, got a story from the other side. Okay, but go ahead and read this show. So this is from the New that the New York Post. Um, a woman who alleges she she was for years by Vince McMahon wrote a gushing love letter to the former WWE CEO in which she declared the duo was quote. In love with a capital L, and she now claims that McMahon coerced her to do it, the Post has learned. Janelle Grant, whose bombshell lawsuit landed a day before the wrestling icon abruptly stepped down as executive chairman of WWE Parrot TKO Group Holdings, penned a lengthy email to McMahon dated December 24, 2021, in which she called him my best friend, my love, and my everything. Uh, quote, after almost three years together, it's like my life isn't even real to me unless you're there and in it, and I'm sharing it all with you, Grant wrote in the Christmas Eve letter to the 78-year-old McMahon, obtained by the Post. Uh, the love-struck letter stands in contrast to the allegations in the explosive lawsuit filed in Connecticut in January, which claimed that McMahon allegedly on Grant's head during a threesome in May 2020, some 18 months before she wrote the alleged love letter. But Grant's attorney, Ann Callis, told the Post that McMahon actually instructed Grant to write the note. Uh, and her lawyer says, frankly, it's pretty disgusting that Vince's weeks late attempt to defend his horrendous behavior that he claims to this day never happened is to try to showcase letters that Vince himself coerced her to write. His psychological torture of her continues, as is typical of abusive predators who respond to women speaking out with increased threats. While Janelle isn't a stranger to his intimidation tactics, this is a new low even for him. Asked about the coercion allegations, McMahon's attorney, Jessica Tom Rosenberg, uh, told the Post that this is revisionist history. No one coerced her to write that letter. She wrote it of her own accord. The fact that the letter shows it was the 24th draft speaks volumes. Uh, you want more? Is that good? Yeah, yeah, just keep, keep going. This, you're right. Okay, so nowhere in her voluminous complaint that is replete with fabrications does she mention being coerced into such behavior. The language of the letter is consistent with other communications she made to Mr. McMahon over the course of their consensual relationship. Uh, meanwhile, a spokesperson for Grant revealed that December 21st, three days before sending the letter, Grant texted McMahon that she had surgery on her pointer finger saying, I think I'm tapping out today. And the alleged text exchange obtained by the Post, which was not included in her lawsuit, but alleged is genuine by a spokesperson for Grant, McMahon responded, sorry, baby, following it with two heart emojis. How will I write your letter? Grant replied in the text thread. I can type and read it or try to write it in a couple of days, Grant added. I'm so sorry if I messed this up. I want you to have a nice letter. Grant's rep, who asked to remain unnamed, also said that Grant had written love letters at McMahon's request so many times that she re- resorted to padding them with existing material from pop culture, including a GQ interview with Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly, published two months before Grant's letter. In the GQ piece, for example, author Molly Lambert says of the couples re- of the celebs' relationship, the carnal component is clearly off the charts, but they can also be sweet and funny, language that was lifted word for word, nearly word for word in Grant's letter. Fox and MGK are in love with a capital L, the story also states. Yet another phrase lifted by Grant. In another passage, Grant wrote, I feel understood, accepted, loved, and appreciated for who I am at my core. You see my heart. You see my soul. There are few people who know the secret of making a heaven here on earth. You are one of those rare people. Grant spoke, spoke spokesperson said that the sugary sweet lines were ripped verbatim from the 1947 film, The Bishop's Wife. Uh, in her suit, Grant... <laughs> Wait, I'm going to stop, stop right here, okay? Yeah. So... She wrote love letters to Vincent Van, okay? And beyond 
the text messages that she's released and the love letter that she wrote to Vince McMahon, okay? Like, that's all That's all we have right now, right? But it just shows, like, the fact that they're coming out saying, like, like we can see the tone here. The, the McMahon, the McMahon, uh, Vince is trying to portray that this is a consensual relationship. This is just one thing we're going to show you, but we're going to show that's very consistent with the tone of the relationship. She's saying she's been abused and coerced and, like, trafficked. Okay, so we have the two polar opposites of a relationship here that are trying to be, that are going to be forwarded in, in evidence in, in court, right? But, you know, how long was the relationship, Joe? Uh, I think it was, like, uh, 18 months or something. 2020 to the end of 2021. All right. All right. So, <laughs> I don't know, man. Just, just I'm going to make one comment off of the information I have seen so far. You, whatever she, like, her version of their relationship would that she's going to try to prove in court that she was coerced, trafficked, you, you know, like, right off the bat, I'm having a very difficult time believing that. Right, right. Initially, that's my initial thought here. Okay, so whatever comes forward, we'll see, but this has me very, it's just... I'm approaching her side of the story with skepticism. Tony, go ahead. Um, yeah, this is very weird. I, I need to get more information, but, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say what I said at the beginning. I need to see all the information before I can make an educated, you know, hypothesis, if you will. Um, and whoever's guilty, let him get the whole brunt of the law. I was thinking, because she says she, and obviously they have ways of checking this, that she pulled these statements from, you know, People Magazine or whatever, right. movies, uh, yeah. and movies and all that. So maybe Vince did want her to send them love letters because it made him feel viral, uh, viral, but not viral, viral. <laughs> or maybe, maybe his lawyer said, hey, uh, have you guys been texting back and forth? And he's probably like, yeah. And he goes, is it something you should be worried about? He goes, yeah. He goes, make her write you a love letter so later on you can... No, this is before. Was... This, no, this love letters are before the allegations. Yeah. This is, this, is this is never before it came a legal issue. She, um, the love letter is December 2021 and, and March 2022 is when Vince cut, her, cut it off. Yeah. Yeah. Had, these are, they, she sent numerous love letters to him, I suppose. Yeah. During the relationship. They, yeah, but what now if, she's trying to say what if during the like relationship the, the doc, you know, he told his lawyer, Hey, you know, I'm seeing this girl and and he said, Hey, make her write you a love letter so it looks like, you know, if she ever accuses you of anything, she was actually in love with you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It's like a preemptive strike. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Like Protecting yourself. In case you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's not, you, right, yeah, yeah. you know what? Because like, like, CM Punk that, said that's something. Actually, that's actually very, it, a very good uh, a very good take. Yeah, and CM the, Punk said something that was very true. He goes, I just can't believe he would be so careless. And I think the same thing. Right. Bro, you saw the, what's happened to politicians. You saw what happened to that guy. The, what was the, the guy, the New York Feinstein. guy? Feinstein. No, the he was like the, the governor, the governor of New York, uh, Cuomo. Cuomo, you know, the other guy uh, what was the guy that was married to uh, Clinton's uh, aide. Oh, that doofus, uh, Wiener. 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 Wiener, Wiener, right? You know, and he got caught, and he got caught, and he kept doing it, and it just shows you that powerful men make a lot of mistakes when they're thinking with their. Well, plus two, you know, no, I mean. I, most most people like these rich people, right? That you know, like like Trump used to say, just grab by the. Bro, right. probably happened like because you probably have women throwing themselves at you because of your stature, your your status in society, you're a billionaire, like and stuff. So you, bro, I'm, you know, like we can't ignore that that reality that a lot of girls are very attracted to successful and rich men and they throw themselves at them. Okay, so like if you're rich and successful. And famous, there's a term not, for them, gold diggers. Right. Yeah, right. Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna attract your daddies. Right. Yeah, you're just gonna attract that. You know, you're gonna possibly attract those people. 
Now, when you don't think you're doing anything wrong, you're just texting that you're putting all the other. You think you're like, you know, like I said, it's like, I, I don't, these rich people that always get caught, I don't think they think in their minds they're doing anything wrong when they're doing it because they're very flippant and, you know, uh, worthless with their, their communications that everybody, everybody these days knows you can get, be provided as evidence. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, that's, it's, it's very strange. That's why I like to, that's why. There's so many issues in society or in, in life that you could argue on social media or we could argue in person, just argue, right? But ultimately to prove who is right, okay, in the argument, you would have to take it to a judge and we sit there in front of a judge and present all of our evidence to see who's right, right? And that's ultimately what we have to kind of wait for here. Right. Is what well, is the, you know what, what's, Go ahead. What's, what's funny... You always hear of stuff like karma, you know, divine intervention and shit like that. When I used to be an MLW and stuff was coming out about the way people were being treated backstage, like, for example, remember when they sent Mickey James, like, her personal belongings in a trash bag? Right, yeah. Yep. And so many that we've all heard, right? Mm -hmm. And so I always used to say on MLW, Karma sooner or later going to catch up with Vincent. I don't want to be two continents within him when he does get hit. This might be it. Do you guys yeah. think seeing what happened with Diddy now that federal a federal investigation might take place against Vince? Like something where they're trying to well, where they're trying to get him charged. Well, I know they well, investigated. Well, let me uh, tell you. Something. Yes, well, I got a theory on that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think because the FBI. You know, and, and, and the, the intelligence they broke, they've been getting a lot of very negative press over over the past few years, right? Yeah. Like, we agree on that? Mm -hmm. Like, there hasn't been, like, a lot of positivity directed the FBI. It's been, like, very negative, okay? I think what they think from a public, a public uh, perception standpoint, they need some really big scalps to show that they're, that they're working for the... Like, they need to take down some of the people... That have for years and years and years have been abusing their power, and we've kind of turned the other cheek and blood. They're going after those people. You know what I'm saying? The Harvey Weinstein's, the uh, you know, the the, the Diddy's, the Vince McMahon's. They're, they're going after Trump. They go, the, you know, you know that these big like I think that's what they think they, they need to do is like go after these people, like the big the big names because that's all the people care about. Like nobody really cares about all all, all the other. They want, they will, people care. It's, it's almost like it's, they're doing it for like, I don't even say, say anything, but like TV ratings almost. You know, they're trying to get some like, like ratings. They're trying to get like, like you know, public the public perception. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I, I don't know. PR. But that's, you, a, but that's the want? best way to do it because you're doing it with people that everybody can agree is doing very scandal. Right, exactly. Right. And, and everybody yeah. has been in a situation where they worked for somebody or maybe even a company that you were trying to maybe get a refund from or going to an airline and then tell them to go yourself, you know, you know, and it's like, okay, finally, we're going to get one of these it's probably been abusing their power forever. And worse, worse, when you bring in underage girls or when you bring in, you know, what Vince was is being allegedly, you know, accused of, you know what I'm saying? Plus like two. all those things are things that, Everybody can gather around and say, "Yeah, well, and everybody, we don't everybody, agree with that." Everybody can get behind this yeah. when you see them going after the little guy. So, like, there's always this perception like, when you see like the, the like law enforcement going after the little guy. Sometimes there's that perception, like, "Well, wait a second, what about the the? How are you letting these people like you know, maybe people get by on it?" So, you know, and it's just it's not like, good for, for for the for, for for societal structure. Like Al Sharpton with his taxes. Laughing. Well, I'm just saying there's just a lot of people that abuse their power, famous people that have, that have gone skated by it as, as a, you know, as an average person. You want to, why are they coming after right. Bro, us? imagine how many people must be mad that nothing ever was done to Chris Christie when he shut down the highway to get back at somebody. Right. Yeah. Stuff like, like that. Nothing happened. Right. Or, it's when he closed, or when he closed the beach. Remember that one? Just for him and Dude. his family. Yeah. Remember that? There's tons of stuff. I mean, like, you know, but, but that's the thing. It's like, you know, when you see 
that the people that have all the money are the ones that are spending to get these or people about in office. This and like, it's, it's like a big protection scam. About, you when, know? about when Gavin and what's this, the Pelosi weren't wearing their mask when yeah. they're at, asking everybody else to do it and nothing was right. done to them either. Right. Yeah. You know, but but then but people like that they you go to the you go to the uh they can be decided to vote. We yeah, we can they, vote. On they that, just caught right? another big fish. They uh they just put that guy, what is his name? Uh the crypto guy. Oh, Sam Banks SPF. Yeah. Yeah, they just threw him in there for like twenty five years. Yeah. Yeah. Well he was he ran the From, he was a bit see, a billions of dollars scam he was running. Yeah, twelve you know? billion dollars. Yeah. And, well, and, he, and the guy was only, he's only like 31 or 32. So he thought all, all of this up when he was, who knows, 24, 25, maybe. Yeah. Right. And it, it depends on how dig, how deep they dig. But, you know, a, a large portion of that was donated to Democrat campaigns and the presidency and governors and all that. It was right. stolen money, though, you know. Who cares? I mean, um, he, got, he got caught. That's yeah. all that matters. There was... Uh, let, let me play Kodam one more on clip just because it's only uh, 13 seconds. But this is the one that everyone's like, oh, it's you're more happy with some proof saying that you had a five star match and the building's quarter full. We're not in the same business. Was basically yeah, good. he was. He kept, actually, go to Bishop. The Bishop has a good little twelve. Bro, minutes. we've been saying the same thing. I, I mean, you know, it's going to be funny to listen because Punk. Look, went this, in is what, by, this is what I've learned. This is what I've learned. There's people that are going to hate us no matter what we do, right? We could go to their house and knock on the door and give them a gold bar. They're still not going to like us, right? And there are people that love everything we do. Our only job is that hopefully. Somebody recommends it to them or one day they have nothing better to do. And they're like, you know what? Let me listen to this whole interview. And when they hear us, we can change their mind. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's almost like when I hear about Trump voter and Biden voters, those guys are all in. You're trying to get the undecided. That's right. really what we have to do. Because it's very hard to change somebody's mind because they already hate us. They already think whatever they think. Right. 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 But. We've been we've been very fortunate. I mean, we're doing good numbers, making good money. We have a, a good fan base, very loyal, you know, and so that's and I, what we got to worry about. I think our fans, right? If anybody gets a discussion about wrestling, the people that listen to us, I think they're 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 going to have a pretty logical perspective of of like the business that that they that they've cultivated. Listen to us because we're, I mean, we you know. You can't argue that we're wrong all the time. It's like, I, I, seriously, like how many times have we been right about things? Yeah, but that'll that, never that, be written. That that'll never like, be, that's the thing. That will never, ever be written and stuff and everything. But it's not difficult being right about things when you know things. You know, it's like you're trying to convince yeah, but that's people the that thing. you know they things. Think we don't and they think things. you don't. Right, exactly. Right. It's like, I didn't, I don't I didn't, I didn't I realize. realize. But, Glenn, we can't worry about those people. Right. Yeah. No, I don't. Right. I know that's, you know. But that's like, yeah. yeah. But I, I think it's funny when everybody kind of like, you start seeing clips of people like, you know, Alvarez says stuff that like we were, we were, we were said like six right. months ago. Yeah. Right. And it's like they're fair, you know, and then they all start talking. It's like, yeah, dude, you could have been listening to us. Right. You know, you know, I don't know. All right, let's get started. Even like, like just one last thing, being on the show and it's, it's been a while and stuff. And prior to that, I listened to you guys. I always knew that disco was uh, divisive, right? Leaning towards a lot of people really not liking him because of his opinions and takes. I, I didn't realize how much some of the internet fans didn't like Conan until all this CMLL, you know, started. And it seems like it's basically just because they don't like you. It's very right. strange. I didn't, I didn't notice it until recently. Well, no, no, no. I said it. <clears throat> well, I yeah. said it on the show a couple yeah. of times. They said they hate me because I bury them. I don't put them over. And I don't, you know, I don't put up with their... They don't know more than me. doesn't matter what they think, right. you know? Yeah. Uh, I've invited a couple people on the show, and even though they're like, oh, Conan never invited us. Oh, yes, I did. I'm not going to bring out private test, text. Why wouldn't I invite you so I can put you in your place? But you know that's what's going to happen, and that's what you don't want. And then those same people who have nothing better to do in life than figure out, what, you know, they, their whole life revolves around wrestling. They all get together, and they make a concerted effort to bury me on social media, to bury me wherever they can. 
Reddit. Here's the beautiful part about everything, bro. Whether it's Reddit, whatever. I think, you know, Disco, all serious, all seriousness in what I'm about to tell you. We've had six TV shows, right? So far, we're in April, April 1st. For, for AAA. AAA, right? Mm -hmm. Five sellouts and one ninety percent full. We're doing great business, so what do I care what they say or think? Right, right. It'd be worse if they were putting me over and I wasn't drawing. Right. You know, but it's, 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 they it's, it's, hate it's, the right. fact that I don't do five-star matches now. We're doing nostalgia. Guess what? It's selling, so why would I even go to five-star matches? Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, that's 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 a funny thing too. It's it's you know honestly, Conan. I think everybody would probably universally hate you because like you you do the same thing. We 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 don't give we we don't you dismiss our our critic right right opinions. Okay, right. and it's kind of they get mad and they they still don't hate us. But but I I don't I think you would probably have less fans. You still have fans because you were a very good performer and you cut good promos. So, like, people are not going to hate on you because they like, like, you, you know, these wrestling fans that try and choose. People didn't like me, you know? The funny thing is that, like, there's this whole joke, like, you say, like, you don't know how much Conan was hated. Like, there, there's, there's, like, two Earths here, okay? There's the Earth that the three of us are on, and then there's the other Earth that Conan is on. Our Earth is people that speak English. The other Earth that Conan lives in is everybody speaks Spanish. They all probably both Earths. Have the same opinions come from the same thing, but we just don't understand the code the Conan Earth because we don't speak Spanish. But I imagine it's probably the exact same thing that we have here, wherever right. it's just maybe honestly, right. but but we never see because like we don't speak we're Spanish. Somehow so every, we don't, some, we don't hear it, right? Somehow every fan now in Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. Somehow, I don't know how, knows more than me. Right. <laughs> But Conan gets a lot of love too, because when I'm looking at these comments, whether it's Twitter or Reddit, and someone would be like, you know, what does he know, mid card or something? You'll always have a few people underneath being like, bro, you don't know this guy's, like, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. You know what this guy's done, you know? Right. So you guys, right. there's supporters too. I, I mean, it's cool. Yeah, I know there's supporters. And, yeah. you know, that's why we do this show. And that's why I do autograph sessions. And they're always cool and they're great, you know? And then you have the haters. And that's part and parcel, bro. So there is to it. Everybody has it. Yeah, it's kind of funny too because uh, I retweeted Shane Shane Doug Shane, Hurricane Helms had a right. great tweet I retweeted. Okay, this right. is like bro, this is like what we talk about. This is this is Shane nice Shane Helms the nicest guy, right? right. <laughs> he does, he sure. gauges on Twitter every once in a while, but he would come on our show, right? But he's usually so, under to tell jokes. But if you disrespect him, he's going to clap back. Well, let me no. give you perp. This is a great tweet. Okay, right. from Shane. If you ever wonder why so many of your favorite wrestlers don't engage on X as much as they used to, quote unquote, fan splaining is high Ooh. on the list. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's great. Like the fans Give him the Jamaican like, horns, right. Joe. Yeah. Right. Give Shane the, yeah. <laughs> like, it's true. This is the argument people are like all of a sudden the fans know all about this more than we do. It's like, what do you, what do you need us for? You know? Right. Like, I just go, go ahead and have your. Yeah, more fan podcasts. You guys, you know, that's all we need is more fan podcasts, right? Yo, what's up? I just want to thank you guys for watching this clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And join our YouTube membership for hours and hours of exclusive, unedited, uncensored content. And being a member will help you get involved in our upcoming live streams. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for riding with us. I know you got a lot of other... Uh, podcast choices, be it wrestling or other ones. And thank you for picking us. Boom.